longer than normal pause. Um, I had a thought just come into my head and so I was thinking about it. Anyway, um, good to be with you today. Uh, a trial, a trial, a trial. We should be thrilled, those of us that are going through uh, a trial. Uh, this isn't a trial of our faith. Uh, those of you that I uh, have communicated with and that we're kind of feel like we're on the same wavelength, this is just a good trial to get us back into the scriptures, back on our knees, asking Heavenly Father uh, for guidance and counsel. This is not a bad thing. Now look, I'm not one that wishes trials on anybody. Um, however, it, it, it always turns out to be the best thing to go through something because then we rely on the Lord. Then we rely on the, the Lord. Uh, the first principles and ordinances of the gospel are first faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, okay? So the first are principles and then the last are ordinances. Um, the doctrine of Christ is faith in Christ and his atonement, repentance, baptism, receiving the Holy Ghost and enduring to the end. We've talked about this. It's in Preach My Gospel. It's in the Book of Mormon. It's in the Bible. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants. I have so many places listed on a, on a couple of different three by five cards of scriptures that point to the doctrine of Christ. In every case, the umbrella, the, the um, I don't know what you would call the underneath, is always faith in Christ and his atonement. And then everything else fits inside that. So let, I, what I want to do is make sure we're always focused on that, faith in Christ and his atonement. So when we do that, we are, um, uh, everything else is going to work out. Now, we're going to talk about the trial of our faith, the trial of our faith. Um, so many, so many good scriptures. Um, I'm going to start in first Peter um, because so many of us are, 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 are having to, you know, go, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? I've had this confirmed to my heart and soul through the Holy Ghost and I'm getting a conflicting um, message, an announcement that, that, uh, somehow I've got to sort this out kind of thing, right? So, so now we, we go through the steps. We go through and we get back to the basics. Um, cause we're not leaving the good ship Zion. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we're not breaking any covenants. We're not going to run off uh, with our tail between our legs. Uh, we're here to stay, uh, to the chagrin of a lot of others, probably. <laughs> it's too bad. Um, um, here, just, okay, so, you know, I get distracted easy, right? You know that. So here's, here's a couple of observations. Um, I've had in the last two videos, I don't know, probably close to a thousand, maybe 800, 900 comments. Um, here's, here's kind of an interesting pattern, interesting pattern I've found. I find that young mothers, by young mothers, it's all relative, right? <laughs> um, let's say mothers that have children still at home that they're responsible for. I find them to be the most passionate on both sides of the issue <laughs> at hand. Um, which makes sense. 
because they're they're more concerned about their children, perhaps, uh, than they are just about themselves. You know, when you get old and that, you know, it's like, well, they're the dogs, you know. <laughs> of course, you have grandkids and things like that, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. So, um, passionate, passionate, and they've been the most vocal on both sides. So they're the most, uh, uh, like, gung-ho of, you know, sticking to what has been revealed to them or uh, being very critical of me for even saying anything um, that, that might uh, not necessarily oppose the jab. I don't oppose the jab. Um, I oppose it being inflicted upon me. <laughs> I guess I do oppose the jab for me personally, but not for others. That's a better way to say it. I, I oppose it for me personally, but if someone else wants it, I, you know, if they wanted to get one every single day of their life, I would say you have the right to do that. So I, I, that's, that's not me. But these, these young moms, man, very, very uh, intense. So that's, this. Is, I don't know what to, to make of that, but that was, that's a pretty uh, interesting observation, at least for my little tiny YouTube channel here. Um, it has brought uh, probably the most uh, criticism, like personal, you know, criticism of myself than any other topic. You know, and here I thought the 10 tribes were gonna do it or, or the new Jerusalem. Dang. Uh, but no, it's this. Um, so we're going to talk about the trial of our faith, the trial of our faith. Um, so we're going to go to first Peter first. And I love the language. I love the language of this. And let's always keep in mind the first principles and ordinances of the gospel. Let's keep in mind the doctrine of Christ the doctrine of Christ, okay? I'm gonna start in verse three. Blessed be, so First Peter chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two separate and distinct individuals, folks. I love that. Which according to his abundance mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It all boils down to that. Everything is an appendage to that. It is so beautiful how this is said. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. <laughs> Dang, that is a greeting. That is a greeting who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in uh, uh, heaviness. We're in heaviness right now. Um. So he gives us the glimpse of the future, but then he goes, I get it. Right now you're in, you're in a, a season of heaviness. Th through manifold temptations. Now listen to verse seven. I love this. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth. Now let's look at that. Not that your faith, and we could even, we could even say, um, uh, add to that faith in Christ and his atonement, because that's what, that's what he started with, the resurrection, the, the death, the burial, the coming forth, the mercy, all that's part of the atonement. And that's what he started with. So that the trial of your faith is more precious than, uh, than that of gold, than, than of gold. So, not that faith in Christ is more precious than gold, but the trial of your faith is more precious than gold. Now think of that. 
I love that because we really should be grateful for this time period right now because we're having to dig deep. We're having to dig deep, right? And so more precious than gold at Paris not, though it be tried with fire. We're being tempered, right? We're, 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 t we're, we're turning into a fine steel. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trial creates the appearing of Christ in our lives because we go to him. This is so, this is so powerful. This is so wonderful. Um, let's, let's go to, let's go to another one. Um, uh, while we're in Peter, let's go to chapter four in first Peter and let's see what that has to say. Um, I'm going to start, um, Uh, in verse 11. So this is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Now, if you've read your uh, uh, Come Follow Me, you're going to hear about the oracles of God in section uh, uh, 90, 90, maybe section 90 or 91. The oracles of God, if any man minister, let him do it as if the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom it be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And then verse 12, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Anybody feel like it's a fiery trial? Which is to try you as though some strange things happen unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's our promise. Now look, if we go through life and everything's just like, yep, agree with that, yep, everything's fine, no problem there, just smooth sailing, don't know what you guys are all worried about. This is our hope. This is, this is why we're being tested so that we may be glad with exceeding joy because we get to be partakers of Christ's suffering and we get to feel him and know him and he will reveal himself unto us. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's go back to the oracles. Uh, we talked about that and I just... Uh, um, I know it's in our reading this week because I remember reading it. Um, yeah, section 90. Hmm. Okay, section 90, verse 5. Um, actually, verse 3. Uh, we'll start in verse 3. Actually, we'll start in verse 2. <laughs> section 90, verse 2. Because it talks about the keys. This is so interesting. Therefore, thou art blessed. This is God speaking to Joseph Smith. Therefore, thou art blessed from henceforth to bear the keys of the kingdom. Now, isn't this so cool? Given unto you, which kingdom is coming forth for the last time? Last dispensation, Joseph Smith. Now, this next verse is really interesting. Verily, I say unto you, the keys of this kingdom shall never be, be taken from you. Now, in verse two, it says the keys of the kingdom. And in verse three, it's the keys of this kingdom. So it's, it's like, I'm telling you about the last dispensation. And now I'm telling you, you're in it. And it's this kingdom that you have the keys for. The kingdom shall never be taken from you. And then there's this little caveat and you go, oh, well, it's only while he's here. While thou art in the world. So you go, okay, so he has the key, key, keys while he's alive. But then read the next. Neither in the world to come. He'll have those keys forever. This is so cool. Um, the keys of the kingdom. Nevertheless, 
through you shall the oracles be given to another, yea, even unto the church. Meaning that you're going to receive the revelations, Joseph, but through those revelations, others are going to uh, receive. Through those revelations or oracles, they'll be given to another, yea, even unto the church. So those oracles or the the revelation given to the doc, in the Doctrine and Covenants is going to be passed down, is going to be passed down. So if we go back to 1 Peter chapter 4, um, verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as, as of the ability which God giveth. In other words, do it under the inspiration of God. Let God prevail in your life and let him minister. Which when I think of let God prevail in my life, I don't think of letting governments and or medical experts prevail in my life. Uh, let God prevail. Let God prevail. That's what our prophets told us to do, okay? To let God prevail in our lives. So the oracles, really interesting um, how, how that tied into our weekly reading. Now, Let's, let's go to uh, a couple more scriptures about the trial of our faith. Now, when you think of the trial, too, think of, think of a, a, a court of law. Think of a court of law. So you have witnesses, you have evidences, you have a jury, maybe, and your, the trial of your faith is in the courtroom. What evidences do you have that you're on the Lord's side? It's pretty cool, isn't it? This is actually a great opportunity. It's, it's, you get to, you get to declare your evidence. You get to declare your witnesses. You get to declare and show. So that's why a trial is so important. Otherwise, you're just locked in your house and you don't get to say anything to anybody. This is a great opportunity. The trial. Uh, you can think of it a as a trial of a test and that's fine. But I think we also look at it as a, as a court, a court of law, a trial, a trial of our faith. Um, and we get to call our witnesses and, and declare our, the evidence that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we believe that he restored his gospel through the prophet Joseph. And the priesthood keys are on the earth today and held by uh, President Nelson. He holds the keys today, passed down. The oracles, if you will. Okay? And... They're borrowed from Joseph. It says so right there in section 90 because he has those keys. He's just like, here you go on assignment. I'll let you have those keys on assignment. Okay, so this is, this is really good. Now, um, let's go to Hebrews um, uh, and see what Hebrews has to say. So this is in Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews 12.1. Um, first off, Hebrews 11, it's all about faith. So highly recommend. It's really similar to um, Ether 12. So Hebrews 11, it's like a mirror image of, of Ether 12. Ether 12 talks about all the, the events, the, the miraculous events, the godly events that not all of them, but many that took place in the Book of Mormon, and it was all by faith that those things happened. In in uh, Hebrews eleven, in Hebrews eleven, it's 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 the same thing, but it's the biblical events that they all took place by faith. So, um, wherefore, okay, so this is Hebrews. So, so we've had this great discourse on faith. Um, and, and quite often when we're speaking um, about faith, when it has to do with the gospel, uh, you know, not faith in man or faith in 
you know, something um, temporal, if you will. But when we're talking about faith in the gospel sense, let's always remember in our mind that it's faith in Christ and his atonement, not just faith. Well, I have faith that, you know, everything will work out. You have faith in what? Well, you know, faith. He said that. Who said that? He, he did. He who? You know, him. No, faith in Christ and his atonement. Okay, Where, Okay. so the, uh, now I'm in Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are com, uh, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Quite often, when you talk about faith, you'll hear the word patience. Patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I love that. I love that. Ties in so well. Um, okay, let's go Book of Mormon. Let, let's go to Ether 12, because this is there's so many powerful scriptures in Ether 12. Um, I'll, just, I'll just read one uh, that, that actually ties into to the first scripture we started with in 1 Peter. Uh, so this is uh, Ether 12, 6. And now I, Moroni, would speak somewhat concerning these things. I would show unto the world that faith is things which are hoped for and not seen. Wherefore, dispute not because ye see not. For ye receive no witness until after the trial of your faith. After the hearing, after the courtroom, that's when you receive your witnesses or, or the jury um, will, will verify, yes, you are a believer. <laughs> you are a believer in Christ and his atonement uh, based on the evidence, based on your witnesses. Yeah. So then that's when, that's when that peaceful feeling comes and we go, yeah, yeah. After the trial. So let's be grateful that we're having to dig down deep and, and identify the things that we have done, the things that we believe in, the, thing, the things that, that the spiritual experiences that we've had in our lives, the feelings we've had in the temple, the feelings we've had watching conference, the feeling that, that we've had throughout our lives, witnessing ordinations, witnessing uh, covenants being made by us and, and others, family and loved ones. Those are the things that we are um, going to bring back to our memory. We're going to study harder. We're going to pray harder. We're going to be a better people. We're going to treat people kinder and, uh, and more gently. We're going to have more compassion because we're digging deeper and we're getting closer to the Savior. And as we do that, things will, will all come together. And this hearing that we're going to be in, it's, it's going to be awesome. Because we are going to not only have it witness to us, but others are going to see that we're on the Lord's side. And we love him. And we love his restored gospel. So uh, glory in the trial of our faith. Let's take advantage of it. Let's be grateful that, that we are, we're being tested right now, many of us. Some aren't. Some it's like, hey, this is, there's no big deal here. You know, um, I, I'm actually grateful for it. And this is the, the, the scriptures point out the reason why. Um, I've become closer uh, to my Savior. 
uh, I've seen him wrestle in a small, small way with knowing uh, what his apostles were going to go through because of their belief in him. Knowing what martyrs throughout time, uh, complications with family and relationships. He, he knew all that. He knew all that. And so we get to experience a little bit, just a little bit of what he might have felt. Um, Joseph Smith in Liberty Jail. Did he experience? Some amazing things there. It's, it's so ironic that it's called Liberty Jail, but, but in reality, that is where Joseph was liberated. Um, his mind was opened up. He was never the same, in my opinion, after the Liberty Jail experience. His mind was opened up to see things from, you know, 40,000 feet instead of right in front of his face. And it was because of his trial. And he, he knew what he was doing was causing a lot of people heartache. A lot of people heartache. Uh, his family, his own wife and children. Um, but he saw the big picture. And that's really what the trial of our faith does is it lets us see the big picture. So let's go forward with that faith, faith in Christ and his atonement, faith in the restored gospel, and uh, we're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. Um, but like Peter said, there might be a spot of bother that you're going to go through for a while, and that's okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope that's helpful for today. Um, it. it it's it's helpful for me just to do just to say it out loud, right? It, it's so this is this is my therapy as well, <laughs> um, just to just to talk it through and out and 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 all around. Um, it it appears that we're going to have another grandchild today, so this is a glorious day. Um, just there's so many things to be thankful for. Uh, let's identify just a couple of things. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to not, uh, be a product of your environment and talk about what you're, you know, what's going on right here. The scriptures are full of that. Um, you know, the, the prophecies all, you know, many of them are like talking about what's right there currently, but then applying them to the whole world in, in different ways. So I apologize if I'm always talking about Utah or something like that, but that's where I'm at. But we've had the weirdest weather, uh, smoke from distant lands, just engulfed with rain. It's just the weirdest thing. You can smell the smoke, yet there's rain, there's wind. You'd think it would blow it away. It didn't. We've had some major flooding in parts of Utah, major flooding. Uh, People's homes are gone or, excuse me, severely damaged. Um, we're in a drought, like crazy drought, yet we have these floods, fires. I'm predicting famine, but that's just me, uh, just based on the weather patterns from last year. Uh, and the and the, the the hard 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 freeze in the south, particularly Texas, and all these things that affected the the early crops. Um, I think I think we're in I think we're in for for some interesting times coming up. And again, more of a trial, more relying on the Lord, preparing uh, and doing doing those temporal things that affect our spiritual being. Right. So. Um, we're gonna we're gonna continue to to look at that uh, on the on the the uh, kind of situation at hand within the within the church and the announcement. 
Um, here's a prediction, it's not a prophecy, a prediction. I suspect from the area, the Utah area presidency anyway, those of us in Utah, we're gonna get a, a statement from the area presidency. Those generally come out on a Friday afternoon and uh, it's just, just a thought perhaps that maybe something like that might come out. Um, I, you know, we'll just have to see what, what happens there. Um, I don't think it's gonna be anything that's earth shattering in my opinion, not anything more than we already know. We still need to rely on the Holy Ghost and do. Uh, I, it, I'm, I'm all about the agency thing, right? That's it. I, I can't believe the things I've been accused of on this. You know, uh, I, I'm telling you, I'm sincere on this. If you want to get the jab, and somebody even criticized me for saying jab, but I, I had one of my videos banned because I used the other word and, you know, it, I, I'm just trying to be careful here, right? And everybody knows what I'm talking about. So, but if you want that and you and, and the Lord's told you or the Holy Ghost has told you that you should get it and, and that you're following the prophet exactly, God bless you. That's wonderful. I have no qualms. Please, please don't inflict that onto me <laughs> and others who, who have had a different answer come to them. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not against you getting it. I, I promise you that. I don't know how many times I can say that. Um, just, you know, I've always said that the thing that bothers me the most is this, it just seems so strange and creepy how, um, how this has been so inflicted on uh, on our rights and our freedoms and our liberties. Um, it's just it's just strange, and how there's an orchestrated uh, way to do that. So anyway, that's I, I, I I'm not gonna keep rehashing this every time. I did it on this video just just to kind of <clears throat> put a. So we'll probably just move on. Might have to talk about it if, if I'm right, if there is an announcement as far as the, the Utah area. Um, so that, you know, we'll just have, have to wait and see if they have a statement on it and we'll, we'll just go from there. But um, none of us are going anywhere. We're all here. We're all just, you know, doing our thing and, uh, and happy and happy to, to be here. We're going to be a kinder and gentler folks, uh, people, um, so that so that the communication can continue, and and that we can have an influence for good. It's hard to have an influence for good when there's a, a real negative, a negative uh, spirit, if you will. Um, I'm not saying that I don't get fired up. I mean, I think on my last video, I was like, I was out of my mind with the with this comparing, you know, the, the, the jab to the brazen serpent that was a representation of Christ on the cross. I just thought, man, we can't do that. But okay, uh, so onward and upward, trial of our faith, faith in Christ and his atonement, uh, be connected, uh, remember our spiritual experiences that we've had, um, Let's let's uh, visualize uh, the courtroom. Love you all. Talk to you soon.